right, so it's almost the beginning of the new year, and I want to get this video out because it's been a long time coming. Uh, what I want to talk about today is EcoBoost engines and direct injection engines in general and carbon issues. All right, first thing I want to do is clarify a video I put out about six to eight months ago called A New Warning to All EcoBoost Owners. And the problem with that video is, is that I rambled on for seven to eight minutes before I got to my point. And the point being of that video is that I was talking to a Ford engineer and he was saying in the labs they were seeing that induction services of any kind, whether it be at home, professional, or otherwise, uh, was damaging the turbos and the EcoBoost engines. Big no-no. Bad thing to do. That's what I was trying to get out. And it can do this multiple ways. You can uh, do an induction service and it breaks up a chunk of carbon and then it goes down through that turbine wheel on the on the turbo and it can really damage the fins on there. And that's never good because they're running at high speeds and all that. And then there's also a wash that can happen of the bearings on the turbo from too much of the chemical going down and through that is not being burned in the engine. And then there's also... Um, and the point being, if it's too much of it's going through down there, it can actually heat up the turbos, just like when you have a misfire and the cylinder doesn't use that fuel in there. Well, where's the fuel go? It still gets pumped out down the exhaust and out, and then the cat's burning nice and hot. So what's the cat do? The cat lights it off, and they melt the cat. Well, the same thing, the catalytic converter, the same thing happens with the turbo. That, that turbine housing with all that exhaust gases going through there, those hot expanding exhaust gases, same thing. It It'll heat it up and it'll make it super hot. Um, some of the guys are saying they're doing this on BMWs and stuff like that and the, that turbo was glowing red hot. That's never freaking good. It's not designed to do that. So that was the whole point of that a new warning to EcoBoost owners and I want to clarify that before we go any further with this video. That was the point of the video, not that the EcoBoost engines are having this end of the world carbon issue. Okay, so on to the carbon issue. The carbon issue is not an issue, okay? The carbon issue is the same as any other manufacturer that is designing engines with direct injection or otherwise, or turbo, turbo direct injection, you know, GTDI, of this era. Now, back in the day, early 90s and all that stuff, they had problems with timing of the fuel and the injectors and how well they atomized it and all that stuff. So they had tons of problems with direct injection. Um, so the technology nowadays eliminates almost all of it, but you still have the problem where there's no fuel being shot in the backside of the intake valve, which is the cooler side uh, uh, valve on there, and therefore it gets uh, carboned up on there because it's never getting washed off of there because the fuel is being directly injected into the engine. So if the freaking fuel is being directly injected to the engine, how is the intake valve getting full of carbon? Well, on EcoBoost engines, what they have built into their strategy on there is they want to make that cylinder as clean as possible before you start putting fuel and air back into there. How do you do that? You, you open the exhaust valve. You're coming up on the exhaust stroke, right? You open the exhaust valve to let it out, right? They're also opening the intake valve at the same time. Under boost, they're thinking all the boosted air is going to come in, fill that cylinder, and push the exhaust gases out. So it's called exhaust scavenging to get the heck out of there. So they start off fresh in that cylinder and there's not all these inert, non-ignitable gases in the cylinder. Because what's that going to do for you? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's not going to help with power, emissions, anything. Fuel economy, it's not going to help. So they try to push it all out of there. So that intake valve is going to be open and there's still be some swirl of the exhaust gases, the dirty exhaust gases, um, in there and it's gonna get on the back side of the intake valve. Nothing's perfect. It's not just gonna come in air only and nothing gets swirled around the intake valve. It's not gonna happen so perfectly like that. So it can still happen and it does still happen and it can happen on EcoBoost engines because of that exhaust scavenging uh, design built in their timing and all that stuff on there of the cams. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy, but any engine over a course of 150, 180,000 miles is going to have carbon buildup, direct injection or multi-port fuel injection. It's going to have some kind of carbon issue. You want to clean the intake track down there. What can we do to clean it? Nothing. 
There's nothing currently Ford approved to clean these engines. Not chemical induction services like I talked about earlier. No, 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 no. Uh, not any kind of media blasting like walnut shell blasting. Nothing like that. Manual cleaning of brushes and solvent. Nothing is approved at this point. So you got to realize that. Uh, and that's in your best interest and Ford's best interest under warranty. And I just prodded them a couple days ago. And I tried to get the latest information for them from the engineers and the team there. And they said they are working diligently on uh, developing an approved cleaning process. And of course, any new method to avoid carbon issues uh, build up in the future. So it's definitely coming. They're definitely working out. They're not oblivious to this whole thing, which many people think. Uh, I think the Ford engineers are very smart, uh, but there is, you know, it'll come in due time, let's just say. So hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping they, we see something by first or second quarter, some kind of communication from Ford of 2015 that they're developing something like this uh, to and, you know, provide a cleaning service because either way down the road they're going to have to offer a cleaning service just like we do with the multi ports we, every 30 60 thousand miles hey come and get an induction service in your best interest well you're gonna have to do it eventually on an ecoboost engine just as regular maintenance just like the old engines now you're probably thinking great they're working on a cleaning process down the road as a maintenance item but what can i do in the meantime to prevent excessive carbon buildup on my EcoBoost engine. Well, the first thing I'm gonna tell you to use is top tier gasoline. And the reason for top tier gasoline like Shell or Chevron is you'll get the most complete burn. And you want the cleanest burn possible and the fewest deposits left behind. And that's the big key here. You start using low grade fuels and anything and it's going to start leaving a lot of deposits behind so that's the first thing you can do is use top tier gasoline uh on the fuel system cleaners the only fuel system cleaner i recommend is chevron with tecron that little bottle of black bottle you poured in your tank that's what i'm talking about use only chevron and other manufacturers all the big manufacturers they'll all agree when they have issues they recommend chevron Tecron in their tanks to fix any kind of issues, whether it be with, with the fuel sending units or with a fuel issue up by the engine. Now, the other thing you can do is the old Italian tuna, and that's where you get on the engine every once in a while and really try to blow some of that carbon out of there instead of letting it all get built up in there. Not to drive like a grandma. We had this problem on the 6.0 liter diesels and the excursions, they're used more as a family vehicle, right? Grocery getters, whatever, putting around town. We always seen, always saw those as uh, having problems with the EGR valves getting plugged up with carbon on them. Whereas guys that use them as construction trucks or guys that use them as like uh, performance trucks, they have so much power uh, and they, they really jet it around in them. Never saw them for carbon issues anywhere on the engines. Now, there's one other small issue with any kind of boosted engine, from a race engine to a diesel engine to a EcoBoost engine, and that's that they have a lot of oil carryover back to the intake. And the reason for that is that those turbos are pressurizing the air in the intake, and they're stuffing as much air down into the cylinders, therefore increasing the volumetric efficiency of each one of those cylinders on there. But the pressures now inside those cylinders are extra high. Therefore, there's more that can get blown by the piston rings down into the crankcase. And then the crankcase gets pressurized and that, that, that pressure plus oil vapors comes back up and through and by PCV hoses goes back into the intake to be sucked back in to be burned. That's, that's all based on you know, emissions. The problem with that is, is you're getting a lot of garbage from that crankcase coming back up through there and uh, baking in the back side of those, those intake valves on there. That's never good. It's just, that's even more deposits in the back side of the intake valves. So what can you do? Well, you can put an oil catch can on there from an aftermarket manufacturer that, will, that takes all those vapors. They come into the can, they condense, they drop to the bottom, and you avoid having all those vapors uh, and all that garbage and bypass products from the cylinders put back down into the engine. But that'll avoid your warranty. So what can we do in the meantime? The best thing you can do is run a high quality, full synthetic oil. And that's because they can handle the heat a lot better and they'll kind of bypass those valves as much as possible instead of getting uh, 
you know, baked on the backside, it'll kind of flow past it and get re reburn inside the cylinder and everything's just fine. Whereas uh, base dyno oil, crude oil, you know, base stock conventional will actually just go in there and the intake valve will be so hot, it'll just start baking onto there and building up as shown in my part two video of my findings video. Now, probably the best fix for this is going to be in the future, if not already, they may have released a few of them here and there, is PCM software updates. Um, they can control a lot of this carbon by changing the valve timing, changing the uh, fuel injection timing and quantity. Um, there's a lot of tweaking in the software that they can do. And just like anything else, like Microsoft, like Windows, whatever, they're always refining the software on there. And they're not gonna put out a TSB saying, oh, download this PCM software update and you're gonna get rid of all your carbon issues. They're gonna kind of put it out with something else, like a, a fix for a false DTC or something like that, and they're gonna bury this improved calibration uh, within there. So you gotta realize that if I personally own the EcoBoost engine and I work at a dealership every day, I would personally check that for new calibrations like once a month. Now, of course, you're not gonna go to the dealership and do that, but I'm just saying, um, if you're in there for something, have them check for PCM software updates if you're thinking you're gonna have a carbon issue. And of course, this video went way longer than I anticipated, but I figured because there's a lot of buzz going on my channel and the forums and everything else, a lot of people talking about it, I had to ad address the direct injection carbon issue. And I'm here to say on the EcoBoost engines or the, the GDI engines, uh, the, the focuses and all that stuff, it's not that big of an issue. Also, when I talked to engineering the other day, they said they were actively pursuing uh, prevention methods, probably software calibration updates in the future, and of course, a Ford approved cleaning process for the intake valves on there as a maintenance item. So they are working on it, and if there's any news on that, I'll be sure to post it on my channel first. So if you wanna get the latest and greatest news from the inside source, I suggest you subscribe to my channel, and I usually put stuff up pretty quick within a few days of stuff being published uh, that's key information for you owners out there. I get it out to you guys and uh, make you well informed.